Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm going to actually spend most of the time here talking to you about some of the updates around tax reform. We've been talking about that so much and it's become kind of this obsession of ours uh, that I figure a lot of people might be watching the video for specifics around the tax reform. But really, the written Dividend Cafe this week, I'd really ask you to go to as well because there's a lot of material there, none of which will have to anything to do with Dividend Cafe, uh, excuse me, with, with tax reform. Very different um, theme, but very important in terms of uh, understanding of some of the portfolio thinking right now and where we are in this bull market, <clears throat> what I think it means from a timing standpoint, cyclically, um, what, there, there's just a lot of information and some charts and things I, I think would be pertinent. So this week, more than most, the, the video and the written Dividend Cafe are going to be quite separate. But we're recording right now. I have up on I have two different TV monitors up in my office, and literally we're watching as I record the um, House has just passed the tax reform bill. It isn't very newsworthy. Those that will see the market's up 200 points and want to associate the two are um, wrong in the sense that the market opened up 200 points before, or 150 points hours before the vote itself. And I think that the uh, House has been extremely clear all week that their whip count indicated they had the votes. Um, frankly, as far as where we go from here, uh, there's there's a little bit more, um, I think, implication. A, um, the Senate's vote, do, does the Senate's bill itself have the votes necessary to pass? That's a, a, a really tricky question. And then what will that bill be? What will the bill look like that ends up getting passed? And then ultimately, if people just wanted to take a nap until this whole thing is over with, which by the way, isn't going to be very long. I really believe right now that they're scrambling to get it all done, meaning House vote, which just took place, Senate vote very quickly. Right now, they're going through all the amendments in the Senate plan. And then a conference of the House and Senate together to create the unified bill that will be the one that goes to the president's desk. I think they're looking to do that in November, looking to the December special election in Alabama and the fact that with really no votes to spare, they have at this point a, a decent likelihood, I would argue a very high likelihood, of a Republican losing that seat, obviously largely based on, on the individual that they nominated. Um, so from a mathematical standpoint, the Senate's already just literally working on a very thin margin as far as passage and looking out to the possibility of losing a seat. I think they're going to want to get this done before then. So the question becomes from a market standpoint, investor standpoint, taxpayer standpoint, what is the likelihood that the Senate bill and the House bill are going to be similar. And I would say that it's very likely, but they're not going to be identical. What the House is celebrating their passage of right now is not going to be the tax bill that goes into law. I think it's going to be um, very uh, comparable, but there will be some adjustments made. Right now, the Senate's proposed bill differs from the House in a couple of ways. One of the things I loved about the House bill is it consolidated some of the tax rates um, I wanted it to be three. They ended up making it four, and that fourth one being the high one, so a double whammy. But the Senate is keeping seven different tax rates, so you have a much less simplified and much less flat tax code. Um, but more importantly, on the corporate side, which is really what this whole thing is coming down to, the Senate wanted to punt it into 2019, uh, putting it off for a whole year. And there's a dangerous historical legacy about passing a certain tax deal, making um, uh, economic actors aware of something that will be happening but will not be happening into the future and how much that alters and sort of manipulates uh, economic behavior and the unintended consequences there can be very difficult. 1982, Reagan's first individual tax cut, even before the big 86 reform, Congress passed it and put it up into the future and so you had just significant amounts of people waiting on productive behavior, knowing it would be taxed at a lower rate the next year, and it caused the economy to double dip recession. It was one of the dumbest things I think I've ever seen legislatively. It was entirely predictable without people having advanced economics degrees. So in this case, it's, it's very different, but my point is, um, I think they're gonna rectify that. It's very hard for me to believe that they've gone to this much work on the corporate investment tax side and really done rather um, 
shoddy work on the individual tax side, and yet they're still going to end up having to punt the, the business uh, tax uh, reductions and reform into 2019. So by them putting a repeal of the Obamacare mandate in the Senate bill, that saves about $400 billion, which would certainly give them, I think, the leeway to put the corporate tax deal currently. So you have a couple of Republican senators jawboning about what they want to see different. You have a couple of uh, the more moderate and left-leaning senators um, that have other issues, but more or less, um, they say that they have done their whip count. They have the votes. There are one or two things they still have to clean up. But those tweaks are what are going to make the difference. And frankly, we kind of know most of them or a range of where most of them will go. The big one we don't that is market sensitive is the treatment of interest expense deductibility. Right now, they're capping how much debt interest companies can deduct based on a formula relative to earnings. And it may seem very granular. There's no way it's going to be one of the big talked about things on television. But I'm confident that in the market, we look at where... Um, a lot of companies that utilize a lot of debt in various ratios that are core to their economic structure have responded. I think uncertainty around that, and in fact, a more unfavorable outcome, um, has, has put some pressure on those stocks. And yet, I don't think the Senate has any idea what they're going to end up doing with that yet. So from a market standpoint, the best thing I can tell you is I'm, uh, I'm putting the odds right now at at least 85 90% that you're going to get a bill passed. Uh, we've already done this in the House. It will happen in the Senate. And then I think it will happen at a conference. The only thing I can't speak to with certainty is what that final bill will really look like. Because it will, obviously, the House and Senate bill are different. And so for there to be one singular final bill, we don't know what, what aspects are going to be altered. But there will be alterations. If I were a betting man, I'd say the alterations will mostly be positive, both to markets and to individual taxpayers. Uh, but as of right now, um, it, I would uh, I would assume that a significant amount of high earning taxpayers in select states are going to see their individual taxes go higher. Uh, that the corporate tax side is going to be significantly better. It's definitely the highlight of this legislation. Markets will respond accordingly, and into the next year, I think that the um, unknowns of how stimulative it'll be are going to play out much more positively than anybody is expecting. So uh, a long talk here today. I apologize for taking so much time, but I really think. It's on uh, a lot of your minds, and we'll be watching it very, very closely. And if uh, you want me to guess, I would say it will actually be the week after Thanksgiving, maybe that Monday, November 27th, that they actually uh, get ready for that uh, unified vote. President Bush's tax cuts, by the way, they were only in conference for three days on one and then seven days on the other. So the conference process does not have to go a month, six weeks. They, uh, there's unbelievable political pressure on the Republicans in the House to just take more or less what the Senate puts out. And uh, the president, from his vantage point, if you just write tax reform on top of the paper and then have a bunch of pictures with crayons, he'll sign that as well. There's no chance the president's not going to sign what they put before him. So this is all in the House and Senate's hands. I hope it's positive for your tax uh, return. More importantly, I hope it's uh, stimulative to our economy. I believe it will be. Not really thrilled with all of it, but overall, I think the corporate side is very good. And that's why you're watching me right now. Uh, thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. Read DividendCafe.com. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be coming back next Wednesday with a very brief but special Thanksgiving Dividend Cafe. Take care.